Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah. Ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah. Ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve men velah. Ve sallam sallimun kathira. Amma ba'd. This is a video in response to a Christian missionary who is claiming that he has, he has asked, asked the Muslim question that he cannot answer it. Even he claimed that the Muslim scholars cannot answer his question. And uh, so we, inshallah ta'ala, are going to show you that his question does not really exist. It's a non-existent question to begin with. So the first question he's claiming that we Muslims, we say that in the Bible, it teaches you there is a three gods. We don't say that first of all. So that question you should ask the, your Christian brothers and sisters, not us. Because us, when we have a dialogues and a debate with the Christians, we always tell them that you are claiming something which does not exist in your book. Okay, so we, they always say no, Jesus is God, the Father is God, the Holy Spirit is God, but that is clearly three gods. So that's one thing you have to, we have to make it clear to you, that your question doesn't make any sense. We never claim that in the Bible teaches you that there's a three gods. What we say, you Christians, you do believe there's a three gods, but you start to play, you try to play around with it by saying no, three in one. So let us analyze that. And I want you to answer my question as well now, you know? So now when you say the Father is God, the question I will ask, is the Father fully God, perfect God, or is half God? Because if the Father is fully God and the perfect God, therefore you are not in need of anyone else. That's it, there's one God, perfect God, complete God, you know? So you have a perfect God there, but no, you go on to say there is another God. You say, no, that Jesus is God as well. And, uh, and you say Jesus is a fully God and is a perfect God too. So how many God there is now? So you have the Father is a perfect God, fully God. Then you have Jesus, a perfect God, fully God. Then you have the Holy Spirit, perfect God, fully God. That's clearly, that is a clear cut, you believe three gods. So we Muslims tell you, listen, what you believe doesn't make any sense because in, according to the Bible, there's only one God. So the problem that you lot are falling into, you are going against your own book. Because even you who try to challenge the Muslim to answer your question, yourself you believe Jesus to be God. So you be, and I believe you have believed that the Holy Spirit is God too. So you believe yourself you believe in Trinity. And you say no three in one. Doesn't make any sense because you're not saying like triangle. Triangle, I will help you, I'll try to give you arguments. Okay, you see, like triangle. Triangle, there's three corners. But there's one triangle. But you don't say that. You don't say there's fully triangle, another fully triangle, another fully triangle. But there are one. Like, which school you been to? You know, so you have to tell us which school you been to in order for us to inform the government to shut it down. Because one plus one plus one, it is equal three, not equal one. Okay, so I want to answer my question. Remember, if the Father is fully God, therefore not, you are not in need of anyone else. If, if the Father is a perfect creator of the heavens and the earth, and he possesses the perfect names and the perfect attributes, and is a perfect God, therefore, khalas, you already have one God. If you say that Jesus is God, then you have two God now. Regardless of playing around, saying, no, they are in one, no, it doesn't make any sense. So that's, to be honest, that's what was, that, that was your main question and your main challenge to the Muslims. As you have mentioned, your, your question is a non-existent question to begin with. Uh, so then he goes on to say that, yeah, the Christians, you believe in three gods. Yeah. Not all of you, Jehovah Witnesses, don't believe. Even they do pray to Jesus, but they don't believe there's the three gods. And not every Christian sect believe in, in Trinity. Because there weren't many sects in Christianity, the Nazarenes, Abanoids, Abanoids, and the other than them. Iban, uh, The other one as well. But the point here is, so you, you, as you saw, you believe there is a three gods without any doubt. And as I've mentioned. And now, the question I will ask you, that you said, yeah, Jesus prayed to God. But when Jesus prayed to God, he was praying as human. So you go on to say that Jesus had two nature. He was God and a man at the same time. So he, as a man, he prayed to God. But as God, he's perfect. But the question I will ask you, 
you as a Christian, you believe Jesus as God is not a father and is not, and likewise the Holy Spirit is not a father. So when Jesus said, no one knows, according to Mark 13, 32, when Jesus said, no one knows the day and the hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father, who is he referring to? He cannot be referring to himself, because Jesus as God is a Son God, he's not a Father. That's what you believe. The Holy Spirit as God is not a Father. So clearly we can see that the Father has more knowledge than Jesus as God and the Holy Spirit. Therefore, logic dictates those both uh, uh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit cannot be God. And this is exactly what Allah mentioned in the Quran. يسألونك عن الساعة أيان مرساها فيما أنت من ذكراها إلى ربك منتهاها إنما أنت منذر من يخشاها الآخر الآية Allah mentioned that similar statement in the Quran given a guideline and commanding the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that if people ask about the hour or tell them that the, the, prepare yourself for the hour and no one has the knowledge of the hour except Allah and this is exactly what Jesus said same Okay, the other thing, because we don't want to prolong the video, um, the other thing that you mentioned, or uh, there's one thing, according to Jesus in John, he said that for people to know you've sent me and you are the true, you are the only true God, he's speaking to the Father. So the question I will ask you, if Jesus, are, Jesus clearly saying the only true God is the Father, therefore Jesus as God, is, has, it has to be false God. Likewise, the Holy Spirit has to be false God. Because according to Jesus' word in Alayhi Salaam, Salaam, the only true God is the Father. There's another problem. And I want to ask this question to the Christians. Jesus as God and the Holy Spirit as God, what is their roles in the New Testament? They're on holiday? What, they're having day off? They're like, Jesus always in the New Testament, always the Father is God. The Father is greater than I. Without the Father, I can do nothing. Always, the always praying to the Father. I pray to the Father. But we know that you always have to pray to God. So how come Jesus is not praying to his God nature or to the Holy Spirit? That shows us clearly, as one of the scholars said, that the Christians, they go to any clear verses, try to explain it according to their desires, and they leave a clear verses which go against their own belief that Jesus to be God or the Holy Spirit to be God. The other thing that you mentioned, that uh, Jesus was crucified. Historically, there was a person who was crucified, but you cannot say it Jesus. Why? Because according to your Bible, and Allah mentioned the Quran, and Allah knows everything because those who wrote the Bible who came after they never witnessed what took place exactly but Allah the knower of the sin and the unseen has informed us they never killed him or crucified him it appeared so to them it appeared so to them but according to Hebrew 5 7 Jesus mentioned or the Bible mentioned that Jesus was praying to the Father to save him from death and he was heard because of his godly fear but we know you don't have to fear God for God to hear you. So what does it mean here? Here means that God responded to his supplication, to his prayer. Because you, you can be the most wicked person never ever, ever existed. And God still hears everything what you say. But the fact that here he mentions the reason that God heard him because of his godly fear means God responded to his supplication, to his prayer. So therefore he saved him. Okay? The other one that you mentioned that Jesus died for your sins and nonsense. Let us go to Jesus' statement, not, not to anyone else. A young boy came to Jesus والسلام, and he said, Oh good master, what should I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? Jesus said to him, keep the commandments of God. That was the, uh, the best opportunity for Jesus to tell him, don't worry, just believe I'm going to die for your sins and I'm going to be resurrected, then you're fine. But what Jesus said to him, keep the commandments of God. What is he referring to? To the Mosaic law. According to Mosaic law, you have to believe in the righteous actions. Exactly what Allah mentioned in the Quran, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Except those who believed in the righteous deeds. So the young boy said to him, I've been doing it, I have been doing it since I was young. Jesus said to him, you are lacking one thing. He said, what is it? He said, give your wealth away, give your wealth away then follow me. So Jesus, alayhi salatu salam, that was the best time to teach him about that he has to die for people's sins, which doesn't make any sense. And uh, the other thing that you're going to say, don't follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Prophet died. Yeah, but according to, you, according to Jesus, who you believe is God, he said he came to follow, he came to fulfill the Mosaic law, not to go and guess it. And the Mo Moses died as well. And why are you God telling people to follow Moses if Moses, because God told Jeremiah, Isaiah, all the prophets, including Jesus, to follow the Mosaic law. So therefore God, God is giving you 
uh, wrong teaching. Doesn't mean because someone died, Prophet Muhammad was teaching is still alive. Even his 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 biography, his sunnah. Not like Jesus, those who spoke about him, they never met him. Mark, Luke, John, not John the Baptist, the John who wrote the Bible. Okay? The other thing that you keep telling us, where is Jesus' bones? We don't believe Jesus died anyway. Why are you asking us where is Jesus' bones? Are you serious? I don't think you are making no sense. But the reason we're making video to refute your claim and your challenge because you have people that viewed your video, 300, over 300,000 people. So we want to show people that your argument is very weak and doesn't make any sense. So you ask us to show you Jesus' bones, but we don't even believe Jesus died. We believe Allah raised him. So I think you're asking the wrong people again. Anyway, we stop here, inshallah ta'ala, and we ask Allah to guide you to the truth and that your argument is a very weak argument and uh, uh, I will conclude with this look to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described himself there is no confusion Allah mentioned clearly in the Quran Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Qul huwa Allahu ahad Allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad in the name of Allah the most merciful the most beneficent say O Muhammad Allah is one unique Master, self-sufficient. Everyone's in need of him. He's not in need of no one. He beget not, neither was he begotten. Was he begotten? And there is nothing like unto him. And there is no one similar to him. So this is how Allah described himself. But when you look to Christianity, Jesus saying, you claiming that Jesus is God, but someone is greater than Jesus. Someone has more knowledge than Jesus. And Jesus died, and someone saved him. Or oh, it's confusion. So come to the true teaching, the belief of Jesus and Moses and Abraham according to... I want you to come to the belief according to Jesus, not the belief according to Paul, Mark, Luke, John. Okay? The belief that which Moses, Abraham, Noah, Jacob, Ishmael, Isaac possessed and believed that, and that belief is, is in the Quran with the clear cut proofs and evidences likewise in the prophetic tradition and Allah Ta'ala Alam and wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to shower his prophets and messengers from Adam to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his blessings and with his mercy and uh, uh, we conclude with this Barakallahu Fikum and may Allah guide those who are sincere from the Christians because me as always focus more on those Christians out there or the Jews or atheists who are sincerely seeking the truth as for the other guys who are clearly blinded with their lies and keep lying against Islam, then you never know. Allah will guide them. We still pray for them. So Allah guide them to the truth.